Good afternoon, everybody. Um, hopefully you can see Doug's screen. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the What's New in Imagine IS webinar. Um, hope you're having a good summer. Hope you had a great weekend and enjoying the warm summer weather that we finally have. Um, if you hear any noise in the background, we've got a lively discussion in the, in the room next to us, so hopefully that won't disturb anyone. Um, can everybody hear us? At this point, just want to make sure before we get moving. I don't see any hands or questions. Oh, wait, I got a question. I spoke too soon. Andy says yes. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. All right. So with that, Let's get going. All right, um, today I'm Doug Ritchie and I'm gonna be the main presenter. And we also, of course, have Heather Stubbs in the room. She's running the computer. And we also have our intern, Jasper, and he's joining us. He's learning all kinds of things. So we thought we'd have him be in the room as well. Uh, so welcome, Jasper. Um, so if you have any questions, just like always, please ask at any time. Heather's watching the, the screen for questions. Raise your hand, whatever you need to do. Um, we'd be happy to answer the questions. Um, we're here to help, and, and that's the whole point of this webinar. Okay, so the, the agenda for today, we're going to go over some updates to the dashboards. Um, the individual's front page. We have a new outcome report I'm going to show you, some service summary updates. Um, there's an ISP discovery report naming convention update, just a small item, but it's kind of nice. And some essential health medication updates. And a big one this month is the assessment center update. So we're going to save, save the best for last. All right. Okay, as I go through this, I'm going to show you a few things for the PowerPoint slides, and then I'll take you into the system um, periodically so you can see those things. Um, so the first thing we're going to show you is, is um, when a supervisor receives an alert to review the ISP, the assigned SSA's name will now be included on that alert. So um, not everybody has this set up for an SSA. But if you do have um, reviews set up on an SSA on their ISP, when they go and try to phase the ISP from draft to share, the supervisor will get an alert. Um, and that's where the name of the SSA is on that alert. Uh, before it wasn't on there, um, but it makes it pretty helpful for the, um, the uh, supervisor to see that name. Um, then the supervisor goes in, they phase uh, the, the ISP to the next phase, they can, um, and then at that point, the SSA will receive a notification of that review. So kind of commu communication both ways, uh, it's kind of handy for both of them. Um, I know I've heard some SSAs be like, yeah, you know, we don't know when the supervisor's done this. So 
now you'll be receiving an alert as well. Okay, and um, when in the portal, when a uh, provider uploads a document in the ImagineIS portal, the SSA receives a notification to view the document. Well, now when they open up that notification, there is the view document link and that link will now go directly to that document. So you don't have to go into SharePoint, take extra clicks to get to that document. You can open it up right there and see what the, what the provider uploaded for you. All right. And um, the finance manager and the budget support specialist are now going to receive alerts and notifications for everyone in the county that would apply to, to them. So for example, if the, um, F, the FM is on vacation, the BSS is, is going to receive notifications and alerts uh, for costing and fetching and all that that um, apply to either the BSS or the FM for anyone in the county. So that's really handy for them. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you that because right Today we're going to be in UAT and to pull up the notifications for the finance manager and the budget support specialist um, would show you live data um, or, or at least real data. So because of HIPAA regulations and all that, I'm not going to be able to show you that actually in the system. But please, if you have any, there's going to be a couple other things like that because we're in UAT. But please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. So I just wanted to add in, your normal dashboards, you're not going to see them. You're going to want to change the drop down to view all alerts. So I don't want any FMs and BSSs that are listening kind of freaking out saying, now your, your notifications and alerts are going kind of crazy. You can choose that option to see all of them. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> I can just see people sweating. freaking out. Oh, no. We want more and more and more <laughs> alerts and notifications. No. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. All right, so let's go in to the system. Um, all right, I'm going to go in as my SSA. Uh, let's go ahead and phase the ISP. All right, I'm going to click on the ISP link. It's currently in draft. I'm going to try to phase it to the next phase. And hopefully that will um, shoot an alert to my supervisor. So just simply click next phase. Your supervisor will be notified of this change, which is what I expected. And if you notice under phase, it says review required instead of going directly to share. Uh, it's because my supervisor has placed a review on the ISP on, on my particular account. So let me go over and should still be logged in as a supervisor. Let me, uh, let me refresh this. Okay, loading. Scroll down to my alerts. Loading. All right, so we have July 1st, uh, review, ISP review required. So I'm going to go, I'm going to just go directly to the ISP instead of going to the alert itself because I know exactly what needs to be done. Um, so less clicks will get you straight there. And that'll pull it up and I'll see that it's review required. I'll go ahead and review it and everything looks great. So I'm going to send it on to the next phase, and I can do that because I'm I'm the supervisor.
All right, so see we moved from uh, review to share. So let's go back to the SSA. You go to the dashboard. Really, I am. Let me see if the, okay. There we go. I clicked the wrong one. Um, okay, so that should pull up here. We have on 7-1, the ISP was moved to share by the SSA supervisor. All right, so I get that notification and, um, and it's all good. So I know what, what's going on. I can continue on with my work. All right, let me go back here. All right, perfect. Okay. Let's see, so we've shown you the two alerts and the view document. So I'm in as the SSA. So let's take a look at the notifications and see if we have a new document added from the portal. So just click on that notification. And we have the view document link that's right here in the notification, and that should take you directly to that document. Click to PDF, and we, we're all good. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. We take it there, and um, you don't have to do multiple clicks just to see what the provider uploaded. All right. Go back to our PowerPoint. Does anyone have any questions on those things so far? Anything? Especially the, the um, finance manager and budget support specialist notifications that we talked about a little bit earlier, since I wasn't able to show you that in UIT. Anything? Nothing yet. I think everybody's okay. Awesome. Okay. And let's move on. We're going to go to the individual's front page updates. So the first thing we have is a circle of support column updates. Um, now the circle of support columns will reflect uh, the fields name, job title, primary phone, secondary phone, and email. Um, and it'll be there on that main front page. And it'll also be if you click on the um, expandable grid. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So everything will be consistent. And it'll give you the information that is most pertinent to you. All right, the second thing, we have the services and supports access. Um, it's not gonna be a whole lot to show here, but before, if an individual is in an ICF, this section of the front page would be locked for the SSA in the county. Now it, it is unlocked and you can edit these fields uh, as well, whether they're in an ICF or not in an ICF. Okay. Uh, the next thing, we have the quick summary review date. Um, on the individual quick summary, on an individual's front page, there used to be this individual quick summary last review date. Um, it really wasn't meaningful, um, so it just became confusing for people. So we go ahead and uh, we got rid of that and just to kind of clear up the form for you. All right, let's go into the system. I'll show you those couple of things. Go back to Potsy's front page. All right, so the first thing was the circle of support column updates. Just go to the form section icon here and go straight to contacts and it'll open up the contacts section. And you can see the circle of support contacts. 
And again, you have the name, job title, primary and secondary phone, and email. Um, here's the expandable grid that I was talking about before these two things weren't consistent with each other. But if you can see, um, it has the same name, job title, the two phone numbers, and email. And that was asked for because that was the um, that was the information you guys wanted the most, uh, easily accessible. So that's why those columns are chosen. All right. So next is the service and supports access. So we just go down to services and supports. And though this this individual is not in an ICF, so but if it, if he was, you would still be able to update. Um, and save those changes, um, ICF or non-ICF. And then the final thing was the individual quick summary where the date was removed. Um, love to show you something there, but the date's been removed. So um, there you go, it's removed and, and we're all good. Okay, let's go back here. Any questions on those? No questions so far. All right. Those were the nice and easy ones. I like this. <laughs> All right. Okay, you now here's a cool thing. A new comprehensive outcome report. This is a report. Um, when you go into the outcome, you can, you can run this report on a specific outcome, and it, it will uh, provide information about action plans, action steps, feedback, and learning logs that are connected to the outcome. And I'll, and I'll run that report and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's really nice. A lot of, a lot of information that's, that's directly related to a specific outcome. All right, uh, the service summary order. When opening service summary management, um, the service summaries will display in descending order. Uh, this is really helpful if you have you know, an individual who's been in the system for a while and they've got a lot of service summaries listed, um, you will have them all listed in a, in a nice descending order for you. So you can easily see which ones are future, present, past, 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 very past, and, and all that good stuff. So um, we got all that um, cleaned up for you. Okay. So this one, the service summary with the completed LFC packet. Um, if you're creating a new service summary and the LFC packet has already been completed, the system's going to automatically fill in the correct budget start and end dates. Uh, this, this is really helpful. We've had you know, some issues sometimes if somebody puts in the wrong budget and start end date and end date, um, the fetch won't work because it needs to match the date, those dates, and imagine you need to match what's in MFF. Um, where this, if the LSE packet is, is completed, it will, it will automatically pull in those dates, so there's no, no possibility of, of getting wrong dates in there. So the fetch will work just fine at that point. Um, that's one of those things, since we're in UAT, and I'm, I have a, uh, an individual who we can't tie to um, real data, I'm not gonna be able to show you that in the system. And here's, a, here's the other one that I'm not gonna be able to show you in the system for the same kind of reason. It's outcome-based services that were listed in pause, but not approved to be paid are now coming over with a fetch, whether or not they are approved. Now we might say, okay, what are you saying here? Um, for some of you, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've experienced this, but there's, two or three outcome-based services um, in pause that um, were not coming over with the fetch because they were not approved yet. Um, they needed to be approved before they would come over um, into Imagine. So what people had to do, they would go into MSS, they would approve them temporarily, do the fetch, it would pull them all in, um, then they'd go back into MSS and, and uncheck them as, as approved. Um, it worked fine, but it was kind of clunky for you and, and, and difficult. So we 
change this and it'll now, no matter if they're approved or not, it'll pull in everything with a fetch. You can do it all at once. Um, so hopefully that will help you out. All right, and we now also have um, two new subcategories for the assistive technology um, category when you create a new proposed service. And I'll show you that. I can definitely show you that one. Um, oh, and finally, um, we have a naming convention change. This is a simple one. Um, but it's when you when an ISP or discovery is published, the PDF name will no longer include timestamp information other than the date. Um, you don't you won't include the fact that it was um, ran on you know particular minute or second. It, it's it's just going to give you the date. Um, too much information and it made the name of the PDF much too long. So this will make it easy for you to read the file name. All right, let's go in the system. Go back to my SSA. Find where I'm at with the notes. Okay, so let's um, let's go to the new outcome report. So I'm going to go to the outcome via the business management tab outcome. I'm just going to click on the outcome name to open up this specific outcome. And then up to the ellipsis, the three dots, more commands, whatever you'd like to call it. And here we have the comprehensive outcome report. Just going to click on that. And it'll load. Now again, this is going to include action plans, action steps, feedback, learning logs connected to this particular outcome. Um, and those things like the action steps and the feedback and the learning logs, um, those all can be put in by the provider through the Imagine IS portal um, if they have access. All right, looks like we're loading. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we have the outcome report. Um, this is the outcome of exercise for POSI gives you all the outcome information from the outcome page, lists the learning logs that are tied to this outcome, and all the information related to those. You get the, oh, there's the feedback. Sorry, missed, a, missed the feedback there. So we have feedback, learning logs, and then finally, the action plans and all those action steps that are tied to the action plan. And who is responsible for those steps and all that, all, everything that is in the system um, related to that. So it's all there um, in one report. And remember, um, as our other reports, if you want to save it, you want to print it, um, always it's best to do it as a PDF and you can just save it or print it or mail it to whoever you need to. All right. So let's go to service summary. I'm going to use the service summary business process tab to get there. Now, like I said, um, you had all this on the service summary management, you had the service summaries displaying in descending order. With this one, I just created Podsy on Friday. Um, so we only have one service summary. But as, as the screenshot showed um, from the PowerPoint, if you have multiple ones, they will be in descending order. So let's go ahead and click on the service summary. And as I mentioned uh, about the LOC packet stuff, here's, here's the budget start, budget end date. Um, and those get automatically pulled when it creates the name. Um, all right, so let's go and show you those new subcategories. To see that, I'm gonna go to services with financial information. 
and we're going to create a new service by clicking the plus button. And it was assistive technology uh, that had the two subcategories that we're looking for. So when this pulls up, I'm going to choose assistive technology, which is right at the top. And then the subcategories are assistive technology consultation and assistive technology support services. All right. Close that. I don't want to save it. Leave. There we go. Let's uh, let me show you that naming convention change. I'm just going to go to the ISP by clicking the little ISP link up at the top. Let's go directly there, and then we'll take a look into ISP history. There should be um, an ISP that has been published already. So I'm going to go down to ISP history. Can I open it up? Yes. I have an ISP that I published on Friday. Let me pull the little field over here with my mouse. You can see that it includes, here's the name right here. It includes the name of the individual, their DODD number, the fact that it's an ISP, and the date, uh, 6-28-2019, as part of the name. So kind of a clean, clean way to name the file. All right. Any questions on those items? Nothing yet. Nothing at all. No. I guess you're just doing such a good job they don't have any questions. <laughs> all right. Okay, so let's let's move on then. And if you think of something Please feel free to stop me. Don't have to wait for me to ask for questions. All right. Okay, so now we're going to move into essential health. Starting to get to some pretty good stuff here. Um, when you go to the essential health page, um, before several of those subcategories on the essential health page were open, you kind of scroll down, scroll through all that stuff. Um, it was a little kind of difficult to get to where you needed to go. Now they've collapsed all those fields. So you can see really quickly and easily uh, the headings and you just go right to where you want to go to without any issue at all. All right. And then when you get there, like for this example, if you go to med med the medications um, subsection, if you go to active medications, it has the last review date in the column now. Uh, so that's available. Um, it was help, some helpful information which you all wanted. Um, and in addition to that, you have the active medications. Now before, if you wanted to see inactive medications, you had to go to the expandable grid and, and kind of filter your way into seeing inactive medications, well now it's just another one of the system views on the uh, medication uh, sub main subsection. And I'll, I'll show you that so you can see what I'm talking about. But it's um, just fewer clicks, you get right to where you need to go, you can see active, inactive in just one, one or two clicks. All right, so now the, um, the essential health audit report that is going to be available. It is available now. Um, and it will display medications and assessments that are active during a specified date span. So it gives you the option of putting in a date span. Um, and it will show you everything that is active as, in relation to the medications and assessments on that report. And I'll, I'll show you that. I'll, we'll go ahead and run the report and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Let's, let's do that now. All right, so I need to get to the essential health page. So let's. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> All right. Go to a 
essential health. We should see, there we go. All the, um, all the subsections are collapsed. So I want to go to medications. It's right there. I don't have to scroll down. I don't have to use the form section icon to find it. It's real easy. I just click on there, opens up that subsection, and I have the active medications right there. All right. So um, the last review date, that's right there. That's one of the columns that has been added. So you have that, um, and when I was talking about being able to quickly get to the inactive medications before, you had to open up this expandable grid over here and kind of, you know, filter your way down. Now, inactive medications, just a matter of clicking there, and you've got the inactive medication. All right, so let's go back to the active medication. And I mentioned the essential health audit report right up here. It's in the command ribbon at the top of the page. And go ahead and click on that. Remember I said that it's going to ask you for parameters, state parameters to put in. Um, and what happened there? I looked away. Let me go back in. So as far as the date parameters, say, I just want to see what's active today. I don't want to see what's active in a three month period or in the entire span. I just want to see what's active today. Um, that's easy. All you have to do is put in today's date in the begin date and end date. It's right here, begin date and end date. Just put today's date in here and it'll give you what's active right here and now. But I'm going to just I'm going to do a little bit bigger of a span, um, put some random dates, and then you click view report. So it's going to pull, it's pulling in um, from the warehouse here, it's one of our new warehouse reports. Um, we have the medications kind of broken down by the type of assessment. Um, we even have, if you have a medication without assessments, um, it'll be listed here as well. And in addition to that, um, the assessments are listed at the end with um, all the questions and how they were answered on each, each assessment. We have one, yeah, one more page here. Um, they have more assessments um, and all the questions and how they're answered. And that's, that's kind of nice. Heather, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, um, it's nice to have those new assessments, the new form that we're, we've got now um, with all the questions. Because at the moment, on the ISP, it won't show you with the new assessments um, that are created, all the questions. It will show the name um, and tied to the medication. but. Um, we're still working on getting those assessment questions on the actual ISP report itself. So what it is, is the essential health report that you typically run and attach to your ISP, that report hasn't been redone by the warehouse yet. This report that Doug's showing right now is a new report that was built in the warehouse. So it has the old assessments and the new assessments on here. When you try to run an essential health report, it won't show the new assessments because they're working on building that report in the essential health report into the data warehouse. Um, it looks like the goal is to have a lot of these new reports in the warehouse with the release the end of this month. So this would just be something temporarily if you want to see all of the new assessments you've created along with your old ones and the medications, you can run this. Um, one thing I want to kind of make sure that's clear that from the date, it's going to run and include any medications or assessments that were active at any point in that start and end date. So if you start that assessment report January 1st, but you made medications or assessments inactive on January 2nd, 
it's still going to appear on here because on January 1st, they were active. So that's where Doug's saying, if you want to just know what's active right now, run it for this date period. But for auditing purposes, you can run it for three years. You can run it for the span date. It gives you those options. It's going to look and see whatever's active in that time period and pull it back on the report for you. Thank you, Heather. All right, so does anybody have any questions about that? Um, it's a little more involved than some of the other things I've shown you, uh, at least with the report. Any questions? Let's go back to the PowerPoint here. I just wanted to also add, as we're building these reports in the um, data warehouse, you'll notice that we're able to do a lot more with the fields and spacing things together, um, kind of getting rid of a lot of blank space that we were stuck with with the old report builder. So that will hopefully make things a little easier for everybody and look a little cleaner. All right. So we have a little question guide appearing again. So. Any more questions? I have no questions or hand raising yet. All right. So we're going to move on to the assessment center. All right. So in the assessment center now, this is a, it's a fairly big change. Um, we now have seven different assessment types that you can choose from. Um, we have insulin metabolic disorder treatments, glucometer, general, which kind of relates to the um, oral and topical that uh, we used to have on here, the GJ tube, health-related activities, inhaled medications, and oxygen. So much more to choose from for you. And we have an updated form for creating the self-medication assessment as well. So what, and, and I'll go through this um, in the actual system, but you'll have three tabs. One's a general tab, one's a questions tab, and one's the actual outcome tab. So the general is just your basic information about the assessment. Uh, the questions are the, those lists of questions, the you know, yes or no questions that, you're, that you go through to create the assessment. Then the outcome, the system will uh, determine what the outcome is you know, depending on what your questions, how you answer those questions. So just three tabs, it's a little different look, but um, it's not hugely different. Hugely, is that, is that can I use that word? Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so there's your questions tab. I'm, I'm gonna show you that in the system, so, and your outcome tab. Um, one nice thing that uh, when you do create the assessment, we have this little blue button with the printer on it, and it allows you to click that, and it will pull up a report of that specific assessment that you're on. So you can print it off, save a copy, um, whatever you need, if you want to include it. With and we built that report. When you look, click that little printer, what comes out looks exactly like the PDF form that you can use as paper forms from the DODD website. So they will look exactly like that if you don't want to run the report where we've kind of condensed everything, it will look just like the PDFs completely for you. Consistency is nice. All right. Um, you can also um, manage assessments through uh, being able to see active, inactive, and removed assessments. Um, I get, I'll show you that when we get into the system and explain that a little bit more. Um, and you also have an actions column where you have an edit button, you have a remove button, or you'll have a reactivate button depending on, on where you are at in the system. Um, just kind of makes it easier. You can do things right there. Um, you can, um, remove uh, an assessment that you maybe maybe made a, a mistake on or or you just want to temporarily remove it um, without having to put an end date or anything like that you just click the remove button and it'll take it take it out for you 
and you can easily reactivate it at any time. I'll show you that as well. All right, let's go in. I need to go to the assessment center. Click on self-medication assessment. All right, so here's what you were seeing in the screenshot. All right, so first, here's your list of assessment types to choose from. Um, we have the active, inactive, and removed assessments. So all you have to do is, right now I'm seeing all the active records. Um, for all assessment types, um, I could choose a specific assess assessment type if I wanted to, and it'll just show me um, the active records for that particular assessment type. So I'm going to go ahead and choose all, and I'll give both of them. Um, inactive assessments, again, these are the ones that I have put um, a an end date in for. So it's inactive, um, and then we have the removed assessment, and this is just one that I have removed from the system. If I want to, I can go to the actions column, and I can reactivate it by clicking reactivate. And now it's off the removed tab, and back over here to active. All right. Any questions on that before I go into actually creating an assessment? Just some basic managing of the assessments. It kind of makes it a lot easier than it used to be. Hopefully that will be helpful. I know when I've been in counties and I've helped you guys put in assessments and medications, um, I was really wanting something like this and now we have it. So um, I'm looking forward to actually using this. This is, this is going to be awesome. So let's go ahead and create. So I'm going to create, create a general, just click the create button. Have a question regarding inactive assessments do they have to be removed in order to not show up on essential health when printed the inactive assessments should no longer appear just being that they're inactive on the essential health report um, if you're running the the new date range report if you choose a date range where that was active it will appear but if you choose a date after that it will not. Um, some people have had issues with assessments that are tied to medications still, and until it might show until you change the assessment that's tied to that medication. So hopefully that answers your questions. If not, if you if you run into an issue, go ahead and reach out to us and send us that information. We'll take a look at it. Okay, so I clicked a general assessment type and then I click the create button. Name, let's do 2019, general. Settings, home, uh, formed by medical doctor, observed by the SSA. Dr. Fever and observed by go with Bob Ross. Uh, 
it's a happy little assessment. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Begin dates. Pick some dates here. Perform dates. All right, no end date, and let's hit save and next. Okay. All right, so here are the questions. I'm just gonna go ahead and answer questions randomly. Now, if, if you know that they're all to be answered no or something, and you just wanna do it quickly, you can actually tab and hit the space bar um, and get through these questions in a matter of a couple of seconds, so. If you have a lot to do, you can do it like that. And then just click Save and Next. Click OK to save the answers. My answers have been submitted successfully. And now it moves over automatically to the Outcome tab. And it says they're unable to self-administer the system determined from the way I answered those questions um, that that was the case. And we also have other considerations that um, you could add additional information here. Um, so you have a, quite a few more options than you used to. And then you just finally hit submit. All right. It's been submitted. And there we have the 2019 general active so if i go to all we should see the 2019 general along with the other two that are active all right um so that's all there is to actually creating the assessment now i want to go ahead and let's take a look at some of these like uh your your ability to edit now an, an assessment is good for its three years. And um, the system now allows you to put in information and to say, um, I submit the first review, the second review, and then at the end of that would be the end of the third year. So you would review it once a year. Um, and the system will now track that and track the dates. So right now on this particular assessment, um, I already have the first review date in because it's already been reviewed once. So I'm going to go ahead and submit the second review. Let's say, you know, years up and it's time for the second review. So you just click on that. It says it's successful. And see here, it automatically put in the second review date today. And it also puts in my name. Um, so that's just really nice to have the system do that for you. It keeps the information in there and helps you track that inf that information. So um, one of the other things I wanted to show you was uh, the report that we were talking about. The, um, let me go into inhaled medications. And this blue button right over here uh, with the printer on it. You just click on it. And it should pull in the information that Heather was talking about. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a PDF to make it a little bit easier to see. It's this library, I think. <laughs> I think it is. Much quicker at my desk, even when I was on the Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, so here you have the self-administration assessment, inhaled medications, and um, the report for this specific assessment. Uh, all the information you had in the general tab, um, as well as the questions tab, and then the outcome. 
and we don't have any dates for, for first review or second review because on this assessment there hasn't been a first review or second review yet. Um, but if there had been, there would be dates here and the name of the person that did the review. All right, awesome. Okay, so any questions with any of that? It's quite a bit. But I mean, it's not, you know, at first, when I first saw it, it's like, well, this looks a lot different. Um, but it's actually extremely intuitive um, and, and easy to use. So uh, I think you're going to like it. Let me check my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything. Do you want to go ahead and pull up a medication and show how we can change the assessment to the new assessment? Sure. It's fairly straightforward like they do now, but maybe just show how it looks a little different. So you want to go to the assessment center? Go to a medication. And essential health. Gotcha. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> essential health. Yes. We were already in the assessment center. Right. Come on, Doug. It's Monday. Yeah. Got a sunburn, so my brain is a little bit cooked. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you want to take one of the medications and change the? Yeah. Okay. One that's already been? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I guess we only have one for inhaled. Yeah. Sorry. So let's see, we had a general. Oh, no. General. We'll click happy there. And then you can go ahead and choose, give you a list of the generals that I had. I'm going to go with 2019 that I just created. And that pulls in all the details for the new assessment that I just um, tied to this medication. Using questions, outcome, all that information is pulled right here. So you don't even have to go to the assessment center to see it. And I just want to make sure everybody saw that when you choose the assessment type, then the medication assessment drop down field is going to narrow down. So you're not seeing a huge list of assessments. It's going to look at just the general assessments, let you choose one of those. If this medication had an old assessment to it, you would see the way the current, um, the assessments you guys are used to with all of the questions at the bottom of the screen. So now you'll be able to notice clearly that this is a new assessment type with just the look of the, the blue bar with the general, the questions, the outcome, all of that information. Perfect. So it's not like a huge change. I just want to make sure everybody saw it in case there were any questions. And always remember, you have the unsaved changes here. It's listed to let you know that you do have unsaved changes and you can click, click save and it'll save all that information for you. All right. So I think I got it. Okay. Let me uh, go back here. So that is the what's new in a nutshell. Um, that's the assessment center changes. Anybody, hopefully you've had a chance to maybe go ahead and peek in there and see see what you have. Uh, went live Thursday night, so Friday morning, you would have seen those changes in production. Um, and I'm hoping you, you have good success with all that um, and, and it makes it a lot easier for you. So any final questions for anything that we talked about at all or if you have any other questions, feel free to ask those as well. No questions, no, no hand raises. So we only got You're one question. You're on it, Doug. One official question. You are on it. I like questions, though. <laughs> well, everybody remember, you can still reach out to us with any questions. You have our email contact information, so please feel free to reach out to us. Good segue. Yes. <laughs>
All right. Um, I just wanted to bring up kind of some not so great news. Our, our team has shrunk a little bit. Um, if anybody has been in contact with Keith Rydell or Michael Williams, they are no longer part of our team. So if you have sent them an email and you haven't heard anything back to them, please reach out to us and we will get those um, questions answered for you. Yeah, definitely. We'll be happy to help in any way. We'll get things figured out for you especially if anybody was working with the, with the two gentlemen, um, with Keith or Mike, on anything in particular right now. Just let us know. So as long as there are no more questions, um, that's the end of the webinar. So I hope you all have a good day. Enjoy the sunshine and the warm weather. Uh, and have a great week and a great 4th of July. Thank you.